After talking about scientific investigations, we might naturally wonder, well, why do we actually want to learn science? Because science helps us make better life decisions. Scientific literacy is a concept that is comparatively recent, and it talks about whether or not you actually understand what you're looking at, pretty much. So, the definition for a scientifically literate person is here, and this essentially boils down to you, if you read a scientific report or paper or article, you have some idea of what they're talking about and some idea of how it should influence your decisions or how to make good decisions based on your new information. Now, none of us should be surprised that careers in science require scientific literacy. I mean, we know that literacy is the ability to read, right? Not quite. Literacy also has the ability to put that information you learn from reading to good use. So scientific literacy is the same. Here we see a jet engine that is mounted on the ground being used to burn off some jet fuel. It is using full afterburners. What are afterburners? Well, afterburners are what happens when you inject fuel into the exhaust stream after the main combustion chamber. Why do we do this? It's because if we injected enough fuel to completely consume the oxygen supply in the combustion chambers, then the turbines at the back of the engine, which are used to power the turbines at the front, which compress the air for combustion in the first place, the turbines at the back would be unable to take those temperatures and melt. And what would happen next? The compressors in front would no longer work. The air would no longer have sufficient pressure to be used and the engine would stop working. Which is typically considered unhealthy for anybody aboard a craft powered by this engine. Hence, we inject the extra fuel after the rear turbines and well, essentially we burn it again, almost like a rocket. There's another special trait about afterburners that should be noted. They are not in fact responsible for these shock diamonds. Afterburners, although they conduct combustion a second round in the same engine, in the same airstream, afterburners although they are f relatively fuel inefficient, do not produce these shock diamonds here. Because even nor during normal flight, the jet exhaust is of lower pressure, for the most part, than the atmosphere around it. What happens? The atmosphere crushes it inward, and thus the exhaust gets denser, and when it's, the exhaust is hot enough to glow, and that glow is compressed into a smaller area, what does it look like? It looks brighter to us. Or rather, smaller volume, because technically this exhaust is three-dimensional. We are only seeing these shock diamonds in two dimensions, because this is an image, obviously, right? Now, what about other careers? Well, cooking this lobster may or may not require scientific literacy. Making sure that your lobster will not poison whoever eats it does require scientific literacy. Why is it that cooking it might also require scientific literacy other than just boil water, drop lobster in? Well, it's because consider if you're making a roasted meal and the oven it says, oh, set to 450 Fahrenheit, and your oven is in Celsius. You need to be reasonably scientifically literate to know the conversion ratio. And why is it that eating lobster might poison somebody if the cook is not scientifically literate? Consider the last time you went near a river. Most rivers in countries that have lots of environmental regulations are marked well, most rivers near common habitations, such as cities, uh, 
are marked something along the lines of high mercury levels. Do not eat more than however much fish from this river per week. Mercury poisoning is very bad for you. However, that's not, that's not the case for lobsters, but that mercury poisoning warning, that relies on scientific literacy for you to understand that mercury is bad for you and that you should restrict your fish intake from that river or avoid it altogether if you can. So lobster, on the other hand, usually, yes, it can give you mercury poisoning, just like other seafood, but usually what they're more concerned with is arsenic. In many rivers, arsenic levels are sufficient that if you eat pro seafood products from them, or river food, if you really want to be picky about the terminology, if you want to eat critters, creatures from them, then it is possible that you might get arsenic poisoning if they are not properly prepared. There have been reports of people dying of arsenic poisoning for eating too much vitamin C along with too much seafood. Which makes it really curious about why so many people eat fish with a squirt of lime or lemon juice. Presumably to nullify the basicity. Fish meat is inherently basic instead of acidic. Now, acidity and basicity should have been covered at least in basics in previous science classes. So I won't get into that. Other reasons to be scientifically literate include the fact that employers like scientifically literate people. Why? Because science encourages you to think critically, like to actually think over a problem, instead of just blindly accepting what somebody else tells you. It also tends to uh, focus on group work, at least in Canada. Well, in the Western world in general. And what does this mean? It means that you will learn to sometimes carry your team and sometimes you will have to learn to, or depending on who you are, if you are like me, you end up having to learn to how to delegate responsibilities to make sure that everybody does something. These are all important skills for employers and they will look for them. Now you might be wondering why the Canadian curriculum focuses on talking to kids first about why they should learn science. It's because it's partially a matter of national pride because Canada has a history of producing many scientific inventions. For example, insulin was discovered by two Canadians working in Canada. The first practical electron microscope was built at the University of Toronto. Alexander Graham Bell is for the most part more Canadian than American, according to Canadians. <laughs> this is slightly debatable. There have also been other uh, in inventions, but they are relatively less prominent. Now, essentially, what these summary points boil down to can be summarized as if you are scientifically literate, you will have an easier time going through life because you can read something or hear something and you can actually think it over and think, is this true? How can I use this? And so on. This is essentially what scientific literacy is about. Understanding and properly using information. Well, that's it for this section. 